Today on Eat More Vegans, we're making a centerpiece of meat fit for a king, but it'll cost less than $40. Crown roast racks of lamb. Stick around, I'll show you how to make them. I'm Al from Eat More Vegans, and as I mentioned today, we're gonna make crown roast racks of lamb. So if you're from the United States, you recognize this Kirkland brand. I bought these at Costco. They weigh about a pound and a half each, and they cost about $30 combined. $16 for this one and $14 for that one. This is a really inexpensive solution to creating absolutely wonderful dishes. So let's go ahead and get these packages open. Okay, let's take a look at what we've got here. So Costco does a great job. Like they actually French the racks of lamb, which means that they cut the meat and fat that's really thin between the bones here, which is great for presentation. Um, the meat looks absolutely delicious. Um, you know, for $30 worth of meat for these two uh, racks, I don't think you can go wrong here. What they do have on here is still gonna be a little bit of silver skin, and you're gonna get that wherever you get racks of lamb. This is actually a piece that you want to uh, make sure that you're trimming off. Silver skin doesn't render like fat, it's gonna stay tough, and this right here is the part that people are gonna bite into when they eat the lamb. So you don't want their first experience to be that tough, sinewy uh, silver skin here. But getting it off is relatively easy. So I'm gonna take my knife, I'm gonna go underneath, and I'm just gonna cut, it's really strong, so I'm just gonna cut right along here. There we go, A little bit of meat, but all mostly silver skin here. I'll go ahead and get these trimmed up, I'll be right back. Okay, as you can see, I've got all the silver skin off. Anything left that you see that's white is fat, and uh, that fat is gonna render while we cook it, and uh, say it together with me, fat is, come on, I can't hear you, taste, right, taste, fat is taste. So we don't wanna take the excess fat off, we just wanna get that silver skin. So let's go ahead and get some flavor on these. Before we get fancy, we're gonna start with uh, just basic salt on the meat. If you've been here before, you know, that the salt goes against the meat, it doesn't go in your rubs or marinades. This way the salt has the opportunity to start acting on the meat and pull out any excess moisture and the salt will uh, absorb into the meat, helping the meat to retain what remaining moisture is there when heat is applied. And you notice I have this on a baker's rack with a drying rack insert on top here. These are super cheap, you can get them on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description if you don't have these but they really make a difference to a lot of air to get all the way around your meat while you're either dry brining steak or salting and letting it absorb for dishes like this. Okay, we're gonna make a really simple marinade, and by the way, these don't have to marinate for long. Uh, today, we're only gonna marinate them for about an hour while we warm up the grill, but uh, let's go ahead and start with taking a little bit of thyme, just the thyme leaves off of the stems here. Okay, so we've probably got about a tablespoon or so, and I'm just gonna give these a rough chop. Okay, and let's take about a stalk of rosemary leaves. Okay, and we're just gonna give these another chop. Okay, we're gonna take a little bit of mint, just a couple of mint leaves. And if you crunch it up in your hand like this, it's way easier to chop. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of avocado oil in here. A lot of people use olive oil for marinades and I think that's great. We're gonna be searing these after we smoke them. So we're using avocado oil because it's a higher smoke point oil. And I'm just gonna mix this up. And let's bring our lamb racks back. So the salt has penetrated. You can see it's brought the excess moisture to the surface. The salt is in the meat, so now the rest of these flavors will be able to be absorbed. So all I'm doing is covering the meat and the fat on top. Make sure we get the sides. Okay, so these are gonna go back in the fridge for an hour, at least it'll be an hour for me, for you, be like that. Okay, welcome back. So uh, if you look at these, you can see just the color is coming out. This marinade has soaked in. We've got some good flavor going. So let's go ahead and assemble our crown roast. So the first thing we're gonna do is turn these over and look at the back. Now you notice, by the way, I did not take the membrane off like we do when we're making ribs because the membrane's gonna help all of this stay together. Uh, but I do wanna help this to be able to bend when I do uh, the assembly here in just a second. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut just a small slit 
in between each bone and you may run into chine bone a little bit here so just be aware that it's there and be careful and just use a sharp knife to get in between the bones and all I'm cutting is maybe a quarter inch here. Now look how easily this bends around now that I've got uh, this done. Let's go ahead and assemble. So the first thing that we're gonna do is tie, when we put these together, we're gonna tie these two bones together. So I'm gonna take some butcher's twine. Now this isn't fancy, there's no fancy knot here. I'm just gonna tie this in a double knot. Okay, there's no keeping your hands clean here, so don't be surprised. But I'm gonna bend these around, and I'm gonna come through here and just wrap my butcher's twine around these last two bones here. So I've got it tied over here, and then I've got it wrapped here. And then I'm gonna come down and around under the bone so that the butcher's twine is in the meat. And now that I have this circle, I wanna squeeze these bones together. So I'm gonna come back across the crown and I'm gonna pull. And you can see how this turns into a crown. And then we'll come back around the bottom with it in this circular form and then come back up and tie it one final time. Don't worry about the amount of string and whether this looks pretty because when we're done cooking, all of that string is going to come off. Okay, so while that was marinating and we were assembling it, the grill was coming up for temperature. I think it's time. I'll meet you at the grill. Welcome to the backyard. So if you've been here before, you recognize Darth, the extra large big green egg over my shoulder here. Uh, Darth is running at 250 degrees, running a combination of Fogo premium hardwood charcoal and chunks of pecan, because I think the flavor of pecan smoke is just gonna do wonders with the way that we've prepared this lamb. If you're new here, by the way, you've probably already figured out this isn't a vegan cooking channel. It's a channel where we cook vegans. In this case, vegan lamb. This is Australian lamb. It was grass fed. It's gonna have a really unique flavor profile, good high quality lamb. You'll also find us cooking grass and grain fed beef and pork and chicken and all kinds of other animals and they were all raised as vegans and I like to show you how to cook and eat them so if that's your jam I hope you'll consider joining us by subscribing on YouTube, following us on Facebook, on Instagram. There's even a TikTok channel blowing up right now. So whatever uh, your favorite method is I hope you'll consider connecting with us. So let's go ahead and get this on Darth. Okay, so I'm gonna put my crown rack right in the middle. So I'm gonna take this temperature probe and I'm gonna put it right into the thickest part of the meat of the lamb. And then I'll plug it into my Thermoworks signals over here, which is controlling the temperature of Darth and monitoring both the grill and now the food temperature. Okay, we're gonna allow that crown roast to take on that pecan smoke. Uh, it's gonna take probably about 45 minutes, maybe an hour for it to get to 120 degrees. And then the exciting part starts, so stick around. Okay, according to the Thermoworks app, we've reached 120 degrees. Boy, we're looking really good. Let's just double check this with the uh, Thermoworks MK4. Yep, we are right there. So here's what we're gonna do now. I'm gonna pull this off. Set it on the cutting board to rest. And I'm gonna loosely tend it to, with aluminum foil just so it's got time to rest, reabsorb any of the juices. There we go. It'll actually continue to cook. And then uh, that's gonna allow it a couple minutes to absorb the juices. The continuation cooking will take the temperature of the meat up to 122, 123 degrees. And then when I come back and sear it, you'll see how we get it the rest of the way. And I know you're gonna like that, so stick around. Okay, it's time to sear. Now, most chefs will tell you that when you're making a crown roast, you have to sear first before you assemble the crown roast because there's no way when they sear in cast iron skillets or on grills to actually get the inside where the meat is seared. Don't do that here. But of course, 
I have a tool that they don't have. I have the sous vide gun from Growblazer. If you've been here before, you've seen me use it. It is the manliest way to sear anything. I actually cooked an entire steak in a video with this uh, a couple of months ago. If you haven't seen that one, you should check it out. But this is gonna allow me to get the flame every place that I want it. So check this out. All right, we're gonna put the roast right back on the grill, but this time on its side where all of the meat is exposed. And that is how we sear a crown roast. All right, let's get it back in the kitchen and see how it tastes. Hey, welcome back to the kitchen. We got another tall guy with us today. So we zoomed out a little bit. So let me introduce my friends, Quinn and his son, Josh. These are more of our neighbors here in Raleigh now that we moved here. And it's exciting because we've been here for nine months, but now that you guys are vaccinated, you get to come on the show and uh, see all these people and taste what hopefully will be some pretty good food. So this is a crown roast rack of lamb. So it's two racks of lamb. It's assembled into this kind of crown looking, you can see why we call it a crown roast, right? Um, and this is meant to be a centerpiece, right? Now you guys have a huge family. You have what, 27 children or something almost. like that almost. Yeah. So for you guys, all you do is add another couple racks of lamb and just make a bigger crown and you've got the same thing. And this is super impressive, but it costs less than $40. Like the meat was $30 and then I, you know, made a marinade and we spent basically nothing putting this together. And so it's a great way to impress friends and family and the kids that, uh, that aren't on the show and don't know what you're doing. If you want to cook this for them, if they don't see this, they'll think that uh, this is the most expensive meal they've ever seen. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to use my scissors here to cut off the pieces of string that didn't uh, get seared when I uh, seared it with the flamethrower, which they got to watch and you guys got to watch. If you don't have one of those flamethrowers, by the way, get one. I'll put a link in the description and use coupon code EMV10 to get 10% off uh, and get a deal on that. Cause you know, we're all about deals, even though we like nice stuff here. All right, so let's move our strings off to the side and let's go ahead and cut up our roasts. All right, so let's cut a chop for everybody. This is gonna end up looking like, like uh, lamb chops because that's kind of what it is. It's just assembled differently in how we cook them. So there's one, get between the bones there. There's another one. All right, so we got a couple here to taste. I got one here for you. I got one here for you. These are nice and medium mm -hmm. rare. I got one for me. And then this uh, this one's for you guys. You guys get one to taste here. Let me hold it up close so you can see what it looks like down here. That's, uh, that's a pretty good looking uh, lamb chop. So, all right, here's the deal. We're gonna taste. Okay. And then we're gonna decide since Leah, my daughter isn't here and she likes to do moist, tender, yummer, yummy MTY. That's how we're gonna evaluate this. All right, you ready? All right. Cheers. 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 Cheers to you guys. All right, let's take a bite. Mm. Mm. I think I did okay, but let's see what you guys think. Moist. Very moist. I think Very we can moist. we can see it mm -hmm. shiny in here, right? Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. tender. Yeah. I don't think you need a knife Very for tender. this, right? Tender. No, no. All right, exactly. how do we do on yummy? Yeah. I'd say 10 out of 10 on Yummy. Awesome. Yeah. All right, so we got MTY even without mm -hmm. Leah here. Leah, I'm sorry you didn't get to participate in this one, but we'll have you on the next video. Thank you everybody for watching. If you like this, I also made an herb crusted rack of lamb and I'm gonna put the video right up here. Point up there, Josh, so they can see. Point right up there. Yeah, it's gonna be right there. And if you've already seen that one, check out this video down here. I think you're gonna like it. I'll see you next time on Eat More Vegans.